Let's go for, uh, I believe it's Kiefer in Tennessee. Pronouns are he, him. I hope it's Kiefer. Is it Kiefer? Am I saying your name right? You're on the line, whoever you are. Yes, you are. Sweet. You, and you wanted to ask about uh, uh, mammals laying eggs? Is that what it is? Oh, I'll go back on mute. Yeah. <laughs> You've mentioned before that uh, mammals, all mammals used to lay eggs. And I was just kind of wondering, I mean, I've yeah. got a whole list of biology questions I would love to ask you. But the first one on that list is that if all mammals used to lay eggs and now we don't, what was the evolutionary process like to get from, from there to where we are now? Like, what is the difference? Like, what even yeah. is an egg? And, you know, how, how did we get here? Yeah, oviparity became oviviviparity became viviparity. And here's what that means. Um, so am, uh, mammals as a clade, as a group, uh, we evolved about 220 million years ago during the Mesozoic era. Um, and at that time, all of us would have been egg laying. Actual placental mammals and marsupials uh, evolved about 120 million years ago. So there's about 120, 100 million year gap here where all mammals are egg laying mammals. Now there are only two species of egg laying mammals. They're what we call the monotremes, um, and those are the echidna and the platypus. So these are mammals that still lay eggs. Um, they still have milk patches instead of nipples, um, but they are still mammals because, fun fact, Live birth has nothing to do with being a mammal. Being a mammal means that you have fur and you lactate. And there's a couple other things as well, like a post anal tail and a notochord, but like, you know, whatever. Um, but those are the main ones is hair and lactation. Um, that's where the word mammal comes from, is from mammary. Um, and so we have these, you know, early, you know, uh, mammals are laying eggs. Then 120 million years ago, we have a split with the placentals and the marsupials who are now giving live birth, but in very different ways. Um, and as far as the transition from these two things is concerned, we can look out into nature now and see weird funkadelic intermittent species. So egg laying is what we call oviparity. Um, and live birth is what we call viviparity. Um, some people say viviparity, like they'll say that it's a viviparous species instead of a vivipara species, which Sounds like a snake. I don't like it. But anyway, it, you've got these uh, uh, ovipara species and, and vivipara <laughs> species or vivipara species. Um, you also have oviviviparity, which is where you have weird egg sac things in your body in what you could technically call like a uterus kind of structure. And then they hatch in you and then you give birth to live young. And it's fucking bananas. Uh, and there's there's a lot of variety in there. Like, for example, some species of sharks, um, they they are oviviviparous. Uh, they, they have eggs in their shark body that hatch in there. And the babies be swimming around eating each other. And the one that's the best cannibal sharks are the ones that get born. And how fucked up is that? Or you have things like uh, 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 anacondas which are, you know, they, they are way more on the viviparous side. They give live birth, but they still have, like, these kind of pseudo-egg structures inside. So, like, we have a weird transition in here, and it really depends on, like, you know, where you're looking. But, like, the, the best things about live birth, the reason why they evolved, um, is that when you have an amniotic egg, you have a, a, a baby growing in an egg, um, there's... It, external surroundings are now independent of the mother and those can have big ramifications that egg can get stepped on and squished. Um, lots of egg laying species have temperature dependent sex determination. So if it gets too hot, you're going to have all boys in your litter. If it gets, you know, too cold, you're going to have all girls in your litter. Um, and that's kind of, you know, could be problematic, I guess. Um, the, uh, uh, you have egg, uh, uh size, as an issue, if the you know embryo grows at the wrong rate or whatever, it could be suffocated in its own egg. Um, the egg is only a set amount of resources, um, and that that they can never have any more resources coming in. Um, uh, the egg, you have clutch size. You have to worry about how many eggs you're going to produce at once, and what's the nutritional benefit to that. There's a huge amount of evolution studies on clutch size. That like, well, this one had. Way, it laid way more eggs, so the species was stronger, but the mothers died sooner because they gave so many resources and blah, blah, blah. Um, the cool thing about giving live birth is that you keep that bun in the oven until it's fully cooked. Um, and you can, you know, protect it within you. It gets constant nutrients within you. It has epigenetic changes based on your life. Um, mothers that face like starvation conditions, especially during the second trimester, tend to have babies that have obesity throughout their life. No matter what they eat, their bodies adapt epigenetically within the womb to soak up extra nutrients. Um, 
So like there, there's cool things like that thing, which you can speed along evolution in this way. Um, you also have, uh, uh, you know, in marsupials, especially pausing gestation, a kangaroo can be pregnant and just shut that shit off for a while and not terminate the pregnancy. Lots of animals can, can terminate pregnancy. Lots and lots and lots of animals can have abortions on purpose. Kangaroos and shit can just stop growing the embryo for a while, carry on about their kangaroo life doing kangaroo stuff, and then when conditions approve, they just turn it back on and finish pregnancy. So uh, the the pathway wow. there from oviparity to viviparity, um, you know, we see what you could call transitions within species today. Um, it's, it's hard to say for sure, you know, what would go on. We can see bone structures and, and, and things like that change. It's why we know that we were placentals by 120 million years, because we can see there's, you know, physical differences that last. Um, but uh, as far as the selection pressures and the reasons for it, it's, it's just a totally new way to do babying. Uh, and it works in a really cool way. So there's, there's a tremendous amount of variety here. So it's, it's sort of like a weird adaptive radiation situation where we found new ways to give birth in, 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 in better environments and better systems. Um, yeah, really cool stuff, you. Uh, but yeah, does that answer your question, Kiefer? Um, mostly, I, I, I only heard bits and pieces of that because there's a weird thing on the line here where it's sometimes you cut out if there's other audio going on. But what I'll just do is just listen I'm back so to sorry. this call on YouTube and, you know, I'll just get, I'll, I'll absorb it all there. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah, the, you're not Play the first person to say there's been some audio issues today. <laughs> we, right. We we had issues with the stream. We had issues with the, the call-in studio before. Now we're having issues with the sound. This is a, it, this is par for the course for launching a new show. <laughs> That's right. But no, we have lots good. of live viewers. I, I really appreciate it, and I love listening to, to Yeah, that's uh, it's awesome. I, I love listening to both of you go off on tangents about you know, your respective fields, so I really appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> You're and, in the uh, right I'll call place. in another time with some more of my questions. If you like. Most definitely. No one called to ask you so much, brains, man. though. We, we can talk. You know what, though? Depending on how Thank they you. Thank you so much, Kiefer. I, I appreciate you Thanks, calling Kiefer. in. Take care. I'm going to... Hello everyone, I'm Jimmy Snow, I'm the executive producer of The Line, and at night I sneak into Matt Dillahunty's house and I trade his cereals for other cereals. He comes out and he's like, wait, I, these are cereals I buy, but I swear I had different cereals. Anyway, would you like to support this channel or any specific show? You can do so over on Patreon or in channel memberships. There are special tiers for special shows or for the channel at large, and it helps us expand programming as well as hopefully very soon launch it in podcast form. Now, also, if you'd like to support, you can like, you can subscribe, you can leave a comment or a super thanks, which is a special highlighted comment that you pay for. Those are fun. And, you know, Screw the algorithm. Go check out something over here, I suppose. Boy, I hope I can still put those icons there, because if I can't, this is going to look really stupid. I'm going to go buy some Cocoa Puffs and switch out Matt's mini-wheats now.